getting a grip on grips, <laughs> right? We are going to talk about installation of grips and the different types and why. I really think we're going to learn a little something today. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary and we are here in the McGolf Shop and we're going to talk about putting on grips and the different styles of grips that are out there in order to put on. Mark from one of the live streams that I do on Monday at 5 30 p.m. called What's in My Drawers, we talk about fittings and repairs and things like that. Uh, he asked about how to build up a golf grip and we're going to talk about that. All right, we have another set of clubs from Auburn, Indiana. Auburn, Indiana is home to, well, the Auburn car, right? Also the Duesenberg. Both classics in their own right. They're both classics in their own right. And I would one day it would be really cool to be able to take a ride in one if we ever had that capability. So what we are what we are experiencing on this one is, uh, and they're left-handed, which is really cool yet again, is so when you install a grip, you would think that you would like it to be straight up and down. And the gentleman from Auburn says he takes it out and he puts it in his club and it looks like that. And that's me having it in my hand correctly. So you see that tilt? It needs to look like that. And I thought, well, maybe that was just one club. So I grabbed another one. And this one's even worse. And it needs to be like that. So we're going to talk about the install of grips and we're going to talk about how some of these grips impact your game and what to look for, that, that kind of stuff. It's interesting. Mrs. McGolf is, even as we speak, if you hear any noise in the background, that's her taking them off. Uh, she does more gripping than I do, actually. Our golfer from Auburn has sent us some uh, Cobra some Cobra Lampkin REL grips. They're the third generation of the REL. And what they have is kind of a hexagonal type pattern. And they, when they get wet, they get actually sticky-er, right? They get stickier. But the thing that they have in them that you don't see too much more is a rib, right? And a rib. So one way to check out a rib is you look through, you look through the weep hole up in here and you look down there and you will see a flat. All right, you will see a flat. Now I doubt I'll be able to get you in there or anything like that, but let's see. You see the weep hole in the back. You see that little flat right there? Maybe you can. Anyway, that flat goes all the way back and that's the rib. Now the idea here is to align it such that the club is like that, not like that. And that's gonna be our, our deal for the day. Now the other thing is, you know, it's a left-handed one, so a lot of guys that are right-handed uh, right have a hard time with left-handed clubs. Me being a left-handed guy, uh, I've gotten used to doing right-handed clubs, but I still have the eye for the left-handed stuff. So that's that one. And then when I'm, I am building up, I have a set of, uh, we're making a set of demo shafts for the fitting room, and we're going to build one up. We're going to build one up to show you how to do it, right? We're going to go for that. So... Before we get started, if you guys uh, like and see what you like, how about liking and subscribing to the channel? It helps us out. Also, we've got something new in the McGolf shop, and it is the divot tool. All right, it's the divot tool, and it's uh, from Pitch Fix, and it's one of the it's one of the uh, well switchblade types, right? You like that? And like that and it comes with its own ball marker make golf ball marker and it has a pencil sharpener on the end <laughs> that was the reason why i liked them so well we have them in gray black green and red and if you send us an email uh, to mcgolf shop at roadrunner.com mrs mcgolf will hook you right up with one of the divot tools Alrighty, so we're going to take a minute here. We're going to get all these grips off, and then we're going to talk about the aligning. All right, we gave Mrs. McGough enough time that she got the uh, grips all off, and they had some tape on them that we, uh, we don't like. And it's typically that water-soluble tape. And the reason why we don't like it is because you have to take, you know, a good re-gripping is you take off the old tape and put on some new. Well, when you have the water-soluble tape, 
it doesn't peel off like the normal stuff. It, 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 some kind of bond appears and it makes it really, really hard to take off. Now, the only company I've ever come across that uses it regularly is TaylorMade. And what you have to do is you have to scrape it. And what you, when you do that, you have to take, the, take a, a long bladed knife and basically pull it towards you so that you don't, uh, you can have really good control of it and you basically scrape it off until all of it's gone, right? And in kind of a case in point, after 10 clubs, there you go, all right? And no, it's not noodles, that's all tape right there. I guess it's on a piece of paper to kind of give you an idea. All that is tape. That's the reason why we don't like it. Not that it's bad, it's just that it takes a long time to get it right. And that's what we're dealing with here. So, all right, first things first, we're gonna deal with the rib, all right? We know that the rib, we've done a couple of checks, we've looked, and the rib is right underneath the Cobra Lego. So that's number one, we're good with that. <clears throat> then we, what do we do is we measure it. I always put the, uh, the end of the cap at the end here and we just go to the first white line that's right there. That way when you go to put tape on, you don't go over and it's not sticking out and it doesn't look unprofessional. So we line it up to that mark. The idea here is to pull the tape tight so there's no wrinkles so that you don't feel it under the grip. There we go. Now, the key here is that you have the, the actual golf club straight up in the air. Now, what's gonna happen is, is that if you're a righty and you go to grab, you're gonna have this tendency to go like that. So you have to be extraordinarily sensitive to the idea that it's up. Now, we're using solvent because that's the traditional way of doing this. The other part of checking is once you get it on here, you immediately pull it off, you set it up for alignment and you make sure it's all good because you just can't go and you can't twist one piece and expecting the whole grip to turn because this rib can get, you know, cattywampus and we don't want that, we want it to be straight. So, let's get started. We only have 10 or 12 to do, so. <laughs> we get the solvent on there, that gets it nice and slickery. Got that on there just like that. Now there's two alignment marks, one on the top, one on the bottom, and you're gonna give it an eyeball that makes sure that it's nice and straight. I think that it is. I kinda eyeball the, you, you can use the pattern as a, as a guide how to get there. And then what you do is you lay it down. Now me being a lefty, that's better. Yeah, that's way better. I mean, if you're really, if he's really open, that's going to be a problem, but like that, that's okay. So that's going straight down the line. When I hold it up, it goes straight. You guys can see before, that's straight up and down the way I was holding it. Remember last time, I would be holding it and it would be like that. That's not what we want. We want straight up and down. And I'm holding it in there just the way I would do it, and that's straight up and down. And that sits in there pretty good. So that's what we're gonna go with. Let's do one more. Again, we give it a mark. I do get questions on what do I do at the end, of, on the butt end of the shaft. It can go either way. You can twist it and fold it in. You can fold them over. As long as it creates a seal, you should be good to go. Everything's nice and slickery. Now, the face on this one's just a little bit shut, so I gotta make sure I'm, when I put it on, it's a little bit to the open, so that when I go to check it, it's good to go. Everything's in line. I check it. Make sure that's in line. It's always right there. And then, 
like that. This needs to be a little bit more this way, I think. See, it depends on how you hold it. This one needs to be turned a little bit. There we go. That's better. We'll check it again. There we go. Straight up and down. Oh yeah, that's the one. Okay, last but not least, because the REL, wipe it down. All right, two, four, six, eight, ten. I got a few more to do. But that's how we get this done. You, you, you line it up, you get the face square, right? And you run the label down the middle of the shaft so it's, it's aimed at the bottom of the iron. Slide it on, make sure everything's aligned. You get it down the bottom and then you align it with your grip. And then that's what you need to do. And, and that's the reason why some of these guys, if, you, if you're a right hand and you're holding it like, holding it like that, you could shut it. Even if you did like this and you held it in there, and you're making it look, you know, if you hold it like this and you go, okay, that's really strong, but it looks really good. Well, yeah, it looks good, but, and it's not comfortable, but you have to have it in your grip the way you would normally have it in your grip. Then you set it up, okay? And, and it, it's in line. The thing is, for this one, it's, uh, normally a lot of people will use the, the shaft logo on it, all right, the shaft logo. In this particular instance, to be straight, I'd have to, there's a an SS-1, and typically you would want to be going down the B, and that's what people would be doing. In order to have this thing right, I'm going to the inside of that B in order for it to be straight for for a friend from Auburn. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Yep, that's what I'm doing. All right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do the rest of the other 10 and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about gripping buildup wise. got all the, uh, I think it was 12 or 13, I'm looking at them now. Yeah, Alright, well, look at that. Paint Gallery says 16. What? And uh, so we got 16 done. What we're going on to now is the how we want to build up a grip. Alright, so let's say you have a grip that looks like this, which is your standard issue grip, right? Standard taper, it's bigger here, it's lower here, but you want to look make it look like that, which it has very little taper. That's what we're going to do next. Now, before we do that, let's go back to the other to the other grips. Now, another thing that can throw a person off and where to align the grip is the offset. If it has a lot of offset and you're trying to shoot it to the bottom of the of the iron head, it's going to make it look tilted because you've got to go through that. You you got to go through the offset. Well, no. So what you want to do is you, you, you make the iron stand still and you still go through the shaft at that point. You're going to go through the bottom. Now it'll become relevant or it'll become yeah, relevant, relevant easy enough that when you stick your hand out and you set it down and this is in your, this is not, you're not doing something crazy. You're taking your normal grip and you lay it down. You'll see the shaft labels uh, were on, I would say pretty decent. And the, the SS1 that we were talking about, I ended up having a target uh, in between the two SS's. If you looked at the Cobra <laughs> label along the top of it, the, uh, I was basically over the O, okay, in order for these things to be straight down. So sometimes people go by the label, I necessarily wouldn't do that. But once you figure out where, you're, where you've got your alignment on your shaft this way, then you would want to be right down the middle heading to the bottom of the uh, the iron. All right, enough of that. So we want to do build up. We want to build up the bottom hand. We want to build up the bottom hand on this one. Typically it's about two layers of tape, okay? And if you want to make more, you can always make more, but we're going to do two layers of tape. 
So it's this is actually a jumbo, this is a mid-size, so obviously they're not going to be the same width here. But what we want to do is make this bottom end bigger, and that was what I was asked by Mark. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to, again, mark the length of the of the tape that we want, right? We don't want to go any longer than that number. Then, if you wanted to build up even more, you would take that same build-up tape, put it along the whole entire length. Now, what you really want to look at here is if you're going to put up more than one layer, right? More than one layer. That what will happen is, is that the you, you could create a seam or a rib of your own because all those layers, because they tend to you know, uh, they don't come tip to tip, they lay on top of each other and they cause their own rib and you could make one by accident and some people don't like that. So what I tend to do is I go by quadrant. So the first one will be the, where the layer would be at six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, and I just keep going around in order to prevent that from happening, right? That's where in order, that keeps it smooth. Same thing when you build up the bottom. You put one at the bottom, one right or left of it, and you're good to go. All right, so we're going to build up the bottom hand, and I got to get my. So we build up the bottom hand. Typically, what I like to do is the length from about the middle to the middle, the length of the long finger to the middle of the palm, and that's the length. Some people say four inches, four or five inches, or whatever. And what I do is I'll grab the back hand right here. And then I will lay that uh, build-up tape right to there, and make it come right into the middle of that, and that's the first one. All right. Now the next one, we want to make sure it's the right length. We don't want to double our e or make more than our effort. And then, just so you can show you, do another quadrant. There we go, and then that way the layers aren't on top of themselves. Then, then we get the tape. Now you're going to see that the tape doesn't quite cover that in that particular order, but it'll be fine for this instance. Hopefully I got enough. This will be something to see, just a very little bit, little bit of solvent. Do we get it? And we do. All right, now we can see where the, the top end's a little bit bigger. So the thing with build-up tape, can build-up tape be the original grip tape? Yes, it can, right? You can use that and you get in smaller pieces or longer pieces and you can use it as build-up tape. The other side of that is it's very sticky, right? So once it hits, Pulling it back off is going to be kind of trouble. When you use regular build-up tape, uh, like I use the brown, it's brown paper packing tape. And it's a little bit thicker, which we like, because that really gets you closer to the sizes that you use. And there's no sticky on the back. And then if you hit it and you have to pull back off, it, it'll work, right? And doesn't destroy the tape. And that's what we're all about with that one. It just It's ease of use, right? Ease of use. And then what you do is, you know, the tape this way, this way, this way, and then that way. And that way it gives you a good circle all the way around instead of building up a, a rib. Unless, of course, that's what you want to do. There are some people that will do that on purpose. Okay. So that's what, that's what building up will do for you. So we talked about, you know, getting your alignment just right with irons and these grips and some ribs. And we talked about, you know, not necessarily using the logo on the shaft, but making sure that the face alignment was right and going down the middle of the stick. We also talked about building them up so they fit your hands, right? Because we're looking for just a little bit touching on the backhand. And when you grab here, just a little bit touching right there. And that's a good size, all right? That's a very, very good size. And grip is the one thing that connects you to the club. So be comfortable, be the one that you like. And that way you swing with a lot of confidence and you're playing better golf. So as always, guys, hopefully you liked everything. Don't be, forget to like and subscribe. And as always, let's see your scores go low.